what's going on YouTube. Out and about again today. This today, a little bit different. Just going out for a hike. So today we're going for a hike along the beautiful River Weir. Hopefully get some of those wonderful autumnal colours. I haven't got my camera with me today. Recently broke a rib so I uh, can't carry anything heavy. Just a little bit too much for me. So today I've just got a bottle of water. A walking stick in case it's a bit unstable underfoot. But uh, other than that, it's great to get out and about. Get some fresh air. I'm sick of, sick of being stuck indoors. Having a broken rib just sucks. Wow. Totally debilitating. Don't recommend it anytime soon. Certainly won't be doing it again. Hope you've all been well. It's been a little while since I made the video, so I hope that gives you an explanation as to why. Uh, so, uh, about a mile or so away from the river, and uh, she'll see you soon. It's good to be extra careful on these walks. The banks can get pretty slippy. Last couple of days we've had a fair bit of rain, so uh, better safe than sorry taking the walk and stick with me. Hopefully gonna get some oranges, yellows, and reds down by the river. And uh, all of it's gonna be done on my phone today, so hashtag phone photography, people. Hopefully we can get some decent images. Looks like it's gonna absolutely piss down in a little while. try and get you to catch the train there. Missed it. So we've got a little bit of a walk ahead of us, so I shall catch you in a little while as we get a bit closer to the river. In a bit, peeps. So the path I'm actually going down is an old train line that was removed quite years ago, but you can follow it all the way down to Darlington. The old uh, metro line stops here at South Hilton and it would have usually continued in a straight line right on from where the train tracks stop right now so get a shot of that for you in a second so there's the station there and the train tracks quite literally carry on straight over this way so uh, as you can see this is where the train tracks used to just follow along and you can follow this pretty much straight way down all the way down to Darling. random stuff you know, I was thinking we've got the World Cup coming up in I think 21 days I was thinking about the England squad and it got me on to thinking about if you were to break England up into regions and form an England squad up for that region who'd have the best region I've got to be honest I think the North East has got to be in with a shout you know if you look at even some of the modern players your Henderson of course Pickford a little while ago, Carrick, Shearer, uh, Beardsley, Waddle, Gascoigne, Pallister. Obviously, you could have had Steve Bruce if he had got a cap. An absolute travesty that that man never got one cap for England. What a player he was. Brian Robson, of course. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I think London, obviously, is going to be going to be tough to beat as well. But I think the North East got to be in with a shout at that one. Let me know your thoughts below. Type in some examples of a, an England team from where you live or where you're living or where you grew up. Let me know. Be an interesting debate that one. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. It does give you a lot of time to ponder. What are your thoughts on the World Cup? What do you think we're going to do? Personally, I think we've got a great squad. But they need to turn up. Of late, they haven't really turned up, have they? Got to have faith in Southgate. I think he has proved to be very limited tactically as a manager. But, uh, you know, I love to be proven wrong. I do hope we are proved wrong. You know, I think semi-finals, if we get to that, I think that's 
would be qualified as a success if we can get to the finals maybe I think that would be uh, well just be special wouldn't it really something I certainly never thought I'd see in my lifetime I was fortunate enough to meet Jack Charlton another one for the list Jack Charlton and Bobby Charlton of course for the North East for, uh, for the England team but I was fortunate enough to meet Jack Charlton at uh, Collectomania in Milton Keynes Oh, must be, must be 10 years ago, I think, 9 or 10 years ago. And uh, Jack was absolutely right that, you know, he, he would never get to see England win a World Cup in his lifetime. I did ask him about it. It was a privilege to get to speak to him. You know, it's not very often you get to speak to somebody who's played against Pele. You know, it's one of the questions I asked him. I did say, you know, what's it like to mark Pele? So I left that to Bobby. <laughs> I'm sure he kicked him though. If he, could, if he could have got near him, he would have kicked him. I'm damn sure of that. He was a very, very physical player. It was old Jack. Probably one of the few Englishmen that could walk into any pub in Ireland and not have to put his hand in his pocket. Absolute travesty that those guys weren't all knighted. You know, I was very fortunate I got to meet Martin Peters as well and Sir Jeff Hurst, uh, Gordon Banks. Yeah, it was an absolute privilege, absolute privilege. Gentlemen, all of them. You know, my little boy was, he was oh, about eight or nine months at the time and every single one of them immediately slipped into granddad mode and it was just beautiful to see. Martin Peters especially, he was just, I was blown away with his generosity, his kindness, the amount of time he had for everybody as well. Absolute gentlemen, all of them, heroes in my book. And again, you know, how they weren't given uh, knighthoods, beyond me. They're given out far too, uh, far too easily these days and how it wasn't Sir Bobby Moore, I have no idea. Let me know your thoughts below. I think that they should all be uh, posthumously awarded their knighthoods, if that's at all possible. But uh, decided I'm going to go the long route because it is about a 12 mile hike, all in all. So what I'm doing is I'm walking to the furthest point and then we're gonna head up, we're gonna head up the river from the furthest point back. Uh, hopefully we'll get some some decent p pictures. Hopefully the uh, the sun will be a bit more conducive to some better pictures walking away from away from it rather than into it. But it's a lovely uh, it's a lovely afternoon. It's a little bit brisk, hence the the woolly hat. But hey, I think I'm rocking it. What do you think? If we get into any woodland, I'd like to see if I can find any mushrooms. Big shout out to Hayes Outdoors and uh, what I believe to be your good missus so really got into uh, in a, Mr Hayes' videos Hayes Outdoors, big shout out to you really got into his videos people like him, Paul Messner uh, the English woodsman really have encouraged me to get up off my arse and get out and uh, take up hiking go and explore new areas they're part of the reason why I've got into photography and hiking so Thank you very much to them, big shout out to you. And uh, you know, having seen Mr. Hayes Outdoors, his uh, most recent video, where he went out foraging for mushrooms and found an absolute shitload. If you haven't seen his videos, you've got to go and check them out. Uh, yeah, he's fantastic, fantastic bloke. From what I can gather, yeah, he comes across brilliantly. Videos are excellent, content superb, very informative, uh, entertaining, educational. If you don't know about locks and latches, he'll certainly teach you. But he's, uh, his missus, I believe, forage with, forage with Fay, I think it it's is. It's a dodgy business, though, if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm looking for some very deliberate things that can't be mistaken, that are founded in uh, woody, mulchy areas. So, uh, yeah, don't really want to be seeing pink elephants or uh, getting rushed to the doctors by picking the wrong mushroom. 
So uh, I'm going to play it safe. If I see this one particular mushroom I'm on the lookout for, then I'm going to pick it. There's one of the old tunnels coming up here, or bridges. So yeah, massive props to Hayes Outdoors, English Woodsman, uh, Paul Messner. And again, you know, big shout out to those guys for being so open, forthright and honest about mental health, the struggles they've had. Uh, it is tough to talk about and when you hear other people talk about it as well, so frankly, so forthrightly and so honestly, it does make things a little bit easier. You know, I've battled with depression for a long time uh, and it was beginning to really sort of get the better of me. I've got coping techniques that I've used for years and they weren't working anymore. So uh, the hiking and getting out and about and the photography, it's really helped me. So uh, thank you very much to those people who helped me get off my ass. But ultimately, if you are suffering and you're suffering in silence, you don't need to be. Hiking and walking might not be the thing that gets you up and about, but there's going to be something out there that gets you up and about. You just got to find out what it is. The whole point of Walk, Explore, Record was just to encourage myself to get out and about more. And I thought I'd record what I'm doing. And if it's of interest to yourself, fantastic. You know, I've got some more stuff coming up soon. Obviously, the rib has really held me up. That was such a ball ache breaking me rib. But yeah, a few interesting stories coming up as well, including a bloke who got eaten by a lion here in Sunderland. I'd like to go and visit some more interesting places as well. I'd like to have a few more away days, but they are expensive. Oh, it's not locked, people. Come on, sort it out. It's not good, see? These doors are supposed to be locked. I'm sure Mr. Hayes outdoors would approve of that one. Solid lock, that one, mate. Probably more important the time as any to get out and about these days and find that little bit of time for yourself. I mean, I've never known life to be as stressful as this. The world's gone fucking mad. That crazy bastard Putin threatening everybody with nuclear weapons. Crazy fool. He's got no idea. The country's going to be fucking bankrupt in the next uh, two years anyway. They're going to be absolutely mullered once they start running out of parts for things. Their economy's already already crashing, according to uh, Joe Blogs, and that one of the fantastic YouTubers out there, very informative. If you haven't seen Mr. Joe Blogs and you've got any interest in economics, check it out. So we're coming up upon the Alexandra, sorry, the Victoria Bridge now. This bridge is fucking stunning. Uh, you would have seen some pictures I took of it before, and if you'd have a look at my other videos. If you haven't seen my other videos, please do go and have a look. This is a beautiful, beautiful viaduct disused railway line uh, I think they're actually on about putting the line back into use in some, in some way as part of the uh, local metro service but uh, I'm gonna walk down past it and get some shots back up the river hopefully get some nice images today with these beautiful autumnal colors I think everybody's suffering at the moment aren't we everything's so damn expensive what does my noodle in is uh you know some of these videos i've seen online there's uh, one guy i follow called uh, he's uh, his channel's called inside russia and uh he went around uh, some uh some russian supermarkets just doing his standard shop just to sort of show how things have increased in price over in russia now what shocked me was it's still cheaper for them to shop and buy their groceries in russia than it is here in England. And yet we didn't start anybody. We haven't invaded our neighbors in, uh, what? I don't know, not up to date with my Scottish history, but uh, it's got to be a good six, 700 years. It's 
to be a bit careful getting down here. It's awfully slippy underfoot, and there's a lot of shit that you can get to, that you can trip on. As you can see, this water's very fast flowing. You would not want to be falling in there. Yeah, as I was saying before, I've got some more stuff coming up on the channel, but wild camping and stuff hasn't exactly been conducive with a neck and back injury, unfortunately. So uh, that's on the back burner at the moment, but it will be coming up. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on um, these people that are doing urban camping. I really don't know what to make of it. As somebody that was homeless and genuinely slept on the streets for five and a half months, first time I saw them do those kinds of videos, I was quite offended. Uh, you know, I felt like those people that were doing the the urban camping, as they they like to call it. They're glorifying what is for a lot of people, and myself included, a very, very traumatic time. Uh, it was incredibly tough. Uh, I don't understand what they're trying to achieve from it other than monetizing for what is, a, for a lot of people, is an incredibly harrowing experience, myself included. You know, I was homeless for five and a half months, sleeping under a bridge, slept in a couple of doorways, bandstands next to next to lakes, uh, by canals, on benches in parks, um, bins when the weather was really bad. Climbed in, inside some wheelie bins and stuff, and that was that was pretty tough. That was when the weather was getting really bad, and I was uh, I was waking up with ice on my sleeping bag and stuff. That wasn't very nice. But I'd like to know what your thoughts are on these guys who are making money off of urban camping. You know, don't get me wrong. I do understand where they're coming from to an extent for the appeal because after about three months when I was able to sort of tone down my senses, well, my, my senses weren't on overload where every little noise made you jump. I did get some fantastic sleeps, and some of the best sleeps I've ever had in my life were, were when I was homeless. You know, I didn't have a tent. I did have, at one stage, but I, I did. I, I hid my stuff in some bushes where I thought it would be safe, and I guess it wasn't. It was clearly found by somebody, and they scattered my clothes all over the place as well, which wasn't nice. But if you do find yourself homeless at the moment, go and get yourself a shopping basket. I'm not joking, metal shopping basket. Best thing I had when I was homeless. Not only could I carry shit around in it, make a fire, turn that upside down, you've got yourself a mobile barbecue. Ingenious. Genius. Oh, look, I'm pretty happy to talk about my homelessness experience with anybody. If I can uh, enlighten anybody or help anybody or make them more aware, I'm not ashamed. One of the uh, toughest things I've ever been through in my life and of them becoming the father of the most wonderful son greatest accomplishment in my life it was uh, incredibly tough a lot of people would have rolled over and died so uh, I was very lucky as well in the fact that uh, I didn't allow myself to wallow the moment it happened, the moment it, it immediately I was focused on how am I going to get myself out of this and I was planning ahead. Uh, I had a long term plan, I wanted to get myself off the streets in six months, didn't quite work out like that. Uh, five and a half months actually I was homeless for, so got there a little bit quicker. Uh, but I did have a little bit of help and a little bit of luck along the way, which is why I was able to shave some time off. There isn't enough help out there. You know, I can give you a perfect example of 
I was, uh, this is in what, Milton Keynes, so shame on Milton Keynes government and council. So I went to uh, the YMCA, a friend of mine was on the tenants committee there at the YMCA at the time. And uh, he nominated me for a bed sit in one of the blocks. Now in one of the blocks, well, in, across the three blocks in that particular YMCA, there was six bed sits available. So my friend who was on the tenants committee, he might have even been the chair of the tenants committee, proposed me for one of the properties which I was turned down for. And when I went to go and get the uh, results as to why I was turned down, they said that they had to hold X amount of uh, spaces for vulnerable people. So I pointed out the fact that I was sleeping under a bridge. I had no money for food. Uh, on an evening, if I got thirsty, I was literally licking the water off of the top of um, posts, pylons and stuff like, by footpaths. Uh, did try drinking from a puddle once when I was really bad I'd never do that again I had this shit for like two days afterwards big big mistake uh, but yeah they told me that oh, it, they had to hold X amount for a vulnerable people so I did inquire what's classed as a vulnerable person uh, I was told that well a vulnerable person is somebody that can't speak English now I'm not a racist person at all but as somebody that grew up in this country, worked all my life, paid my taxes, you would hope that when you need the help, it's there. And unfortunately that sort of did lead on to a bit of a downward spiral uh, after that news, found it very, very tough. But you know, there's always a way out of it. I mean, I didn't tell hardly anybody I was homeless. I told a lad I knew called Colin, uh, and another mate called Lee. Uh, Lee used to bring me down food and stuff on his way home from work every now and again. Uh, Colin washed my clothes for me once. Thanks for that. Um, it's definitely, it's tough going. It's really, really tough going being homeless. Uh, you know, I was fortunate as well in the fact that as I was forward thinking and I wasn't going to accept the position I was in, I set myself those goals and I immediately went looking for work whilst I still had clean clothes and I was clean shaven and all the rest of it. I was able to get myself a bar job during the day. I was washing dishes in a restaurant in the evening. And if I wasn't either of those places, I was knocking on doors asking if I could wash people's cars. Never once did I sit and beg, ask for a handout. I worked my ass off. And with a little bit of luck, or a lot of luck, I was able to get myself out of it. Now my story's not gonna be the same as everyone else's. <laughs> but I'm happy to discuss it. You know, I worked damn hard. I set myself more goals after that. I said, what to do? When I was sitting under the bridge that night and I wasn't going to, had that epiphany where I wasn't going to accept the position I found myself in. I said to one day, I'm going to be in business for myself. And I set myself some goals. Used to work in sales and had some mates who worked in recruitment and they were doing very well. So I set myself some goals. I wanted to get in recruitment. So I did, got myself a job in recruitment. Somebody gave me an opportunity. Uh, just so happens he was trying to sell the company at the time. He didn't so much care if I could do the job as to a bum on the seat. So when people came to look at the business, he had a full office. Just so happened, I was very good at the job. Uh, I, think I wouldn't be out of place in saying that probably one of the top energy recruitment consultants in the UK without question my reputation is without reproach uh, that's the reason why with uh, my last position I was a manager at a recruitment agency heading up a department one of my main clients was the fourth biggest employer in the world a company I'd been working with for years now they approached me and said look 
we have a relationship with you. We haven't got a relationship with your client, uh, sorry, your boss, your employers. Why are we making them rich? You know, we're sticking 400 grand a year in their pocket. You're doing all the hard work and we don't, couldn't even tell you their names. So, when the fourth biggest employer on the planet says to you, set up in business on your own and we'll support you, and you know that contract's worth a minimum of a quarter of a mil a year, up to sort of half a mil a year, you do it. Now I maxed out every single one of my cards to set the business up, every line of credit I have had. I even moved to the other side of the country to save money on rent. 600 pounds a month saving on rent by moving north. Had to move away from my son. Afterwards split from the ex. But I made a lot of sacrifices. As it transpired all for nothing. Who knew there was going to be a global pandemic? So that was the end of my business. And I also ended up bankrupt. I'm not able to go out to work just yet because I'm waiting on the NHS sorting their finger, pulling their finger out and sorting out my broken back. Because uh, that's just hell. Although I'm being quite mobile at the moment, there are times where I am quite literally incapacitated for, a, for days, sometimes weeks. So what happens is my spine goes dead straight and swells up and the pain is just excruciating. Can't even get out of bed. You literally have to throw yourself on the floor and pull yourself up. It's really, 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 really bad. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to work. I'm itch, getting the itch again. I'm so bored. Uh, well, I am grateful for having this time to get out and about and whatnot. But if I didn't have these uh, these walks that I'm doing and the photo photography and stuff, definitely I think I'd go stir crazy. It certainly wouldn't be good for the depression. So again, you know, it might seem like I'm harping on about it, peeps, but exercise releases endorphins. Endorphins improve your mood. If you improve your mood, that's a great start to improving everything else along your journey. Getting a bit tired now. I'm about 11 miles in to my route. So only another two miles or so to go. I'm really glad that I brought this uh, this pole with me. It's incredibly treacherous underfoot in places. So if you are going for a walk on the River Weir at the moment, please do be very careful. I've got proper hiking boots on. I'm really glad that I brought this hiking pole with me as well. I think I would have slipped over a couple of times without it. And. Uh, with a broken rib, that's gonna fucking suck. But uh, yeah, something a bit different today compared to my other videos. It's just been a nice long hike, good chat. Hopefully there's some interesting content in there for you. I'd love to know what your thoughts are, like I said, on the um, urban camping. Let me know what your thoughts are on the England squad. If you're in London, or Birmingham, the North West, wherever, if you can come up with a, come up with your best England squad from your region. And Ireland, you can do the same. <laughs> Sorry, bit of a Mike Bassett, England manager joke there. So as we're out and about, might as well tell you a joke or two. So Paddy and Murphy, they're up in there, up in a plane. Murphy's the instructor. He says to Paddy, when you reach a thousand feet there, Paddy, he says, open your chute there, will you? So Paddy says, oh, you're grand, gotcha. So they jump out the plane. And they're falling, hurtling, having a great time. Murphy says to Paddy, he says, right, Paddy, open your chute there now, will you? He says, oh, Murphy, this is grand. I can carry on, don't worry. 500 foot comes. Fuck's sake there, Paddy, will you? Please open your fucking chute there, will you? He says, hi, this is fucking grand, this like. Gets down to like the roof of a house. He says, fuck's sake there, Paddy, will you? Please open your fucking shoot there, will you? He says, I'm fine, Murphy. I can jump from here. Hey, sorry if you're Irish. You took offence to that. And apologies for the terrible accent. 
Some accents are just incredibly difficult to do and the Irish is one of them. It's been another amazing day. I've loved getting out and about as always. I'd encourage anybody to get out and about and do the same. It's good to be out and about people. It's a beautiful time of year. The trees are just gorgeous, the countryside's lovely. Of course, same as always, take your cameras with you people, walk, explore, record. And if you fancy it, like and subscribe. Fuck me, my foot just got wet. As I was giving you that lovely message there of begging for you to support the channel, put my foot in the biggest damn puddle. So uh, that's got to be worth a like and a subscribe. Because I've now got to suffer all the way home with one wet foot. Yeah, just a quick shout out as well to Boris and his drinking buddies. Thanks very much for not supporting entrepreneurs. You shaved the orangutan. You've probably screwed over some very, very talented people in the UK. My life's never going to be the same. I've got no interest in going back into that line of work again. Done with all the stress. My life now is a, it's a different focus. I'd like to do something that's more meaningful. What that is yet, I don't know. But I'm certainly looking to reduce my stress levels. I don't want that anymore. It's not what I want for my life. Anyone got any suggestions? Put them below. We are not far from the beautiful Spire Bridge now. Somebody told me that some crazy bastard climbed to the top of that. I think it was a Sunderland fan. I think it was uh, FA Cup time or something. If that was you or you're familiar with it, comment below and let me know if there's any truth to it. But uh, to climb to the top of that, that's impressive. It is a stunning piece of engineering really is you can see it from bloody miles away right and people i'm now back in the city nearly back in modern day suburbia it's been a lovely day getting out and about as i said it's about 12 13 mile round trip so uh good for me so i'm only uh, new to hiking very unfit as you can probably tell through the heavy breathing throughout but uh Great to get out and about all the same. I've been going stir fucking crazy being stuck indoors uh, and being uh, restricted by my injury. So yeah, nice to get out and about. Not too uh, too hard a walk. Not too much gradient. If you get if you're local, give it a try. It really is a good in, in, intermediary or good introduction to to hiking. Like it's very slippery underfoot, so please do be careful. But thanks very much for watching, people. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, walk, explore, record. Thanks very much, people. Peace out. See you in the next one.